So let's talk about leaders of Space Marines, and in particular the many flavours of Power Armoured Hero that are standing just beside them. Let's talk through the meme level legions of the Primaris Lieutenants. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines, and in this video I thought we'd take a focused look on Games Workshop's apparent favourite models in all of 40k, with a look at the Primaris Lieutenant, the single class of Space Marine sub commander that's kind of likely to have more sculpts than your entire line of HQs put together. In the lore, the Primaris Lieutenants are pretty much the second in command of a company or battle force, a rank that dates back to the Great Crusade, that was re implemented by Reboot A. Gilliman in his reorganisation of the Space Marines with the coming of Primaris and the start of the Indomitus Crusades. In 9th edition 40k, their main rule was the reroll once to wound aura that they had, which meant that they gave a damage buff in the same sort of way that a captain did, but the two could stack together. But in 10th edition, they'd been slightly shifted around, generally lieutenants attached to individual units, and then they grant the lethal hits rule to that unit, allowing them to auto wound on sixes, and that's a particularly good rule for boosting your damage against things that have got high toughness. The other advantage is that they can often be attached alongside captains or chapter masters, meaning that you could have a big seriously threatening space marine unit if you wanted to go for some big investment. It's quite nice for being able to include enhancements in a unit that has a named character as well. In this video I thought we'd go through all of the Primaris Lieutenant models and each data sheet that represents them in-game, talk through their positives and negatives and give them a rough in-game star rating out of 5. For this one I'm just going to focus on the standard Space Marine units plus any Divergent Chapter Lieutenant equivalents, and while there might be a few that could be debated whether or not they count, for this one I'm going to focus on Space Marine units that grant the Lethal Hit special rule to their units, or specifically a called Lieutenant in their name, which while still covering quite a lot of data sheets, maybe isn't quite as many as you'd think for the sheer ridiculous number of models that Games Workshop has brought out for them. First up, and starting out, we have the many flavours of Space Marine Lieutenants, equipped with standard Tacticus armour, this is the one that's been re-sculpted pretty much umpteen times, and they all use the exact same rules and datasheet in-game. I'm not 100% sure if I've literally collected all of them here in this picture, but this is a good number of them. Let's go from left to right, top to bottom. On the top left we have the standard one that's available from the Games Workshop web store. Here's the Power Sword one that you can get in the Start Collecting Death Watch box. The next is Lieutenant Calcius out of the Conquest magazine, the limited edition miniature for him. Next there's a Bolt Rifle one from Dark Imperium. Then with the Power Sword and the helmet under his arm, there's Lieutenant Amulius. He was a Mail Order exclusive figure. There's Lieutenant Titus, who's currently available only in the Warhammer 40k Space Marine board game, I believe sold in the USA in Target. Then there's the sort of Blade Guard Indomitus pattern lieutenants that you could get throughout 9th edition really quite cheaply. I think he was quite a cool one with his Mastercrafted Power Sword and his Neo Volkite pistol. There's then a trio of chapter specific ones with a little bit of theme for Space Wolves, Dark Angels and Blood Angels respectively. The Space Wolf one you can get in their current combat patrol, the Dark Angels and the Blood Angels ones, Zachariah and Tomaron I believe, they're individually sold on Games Workshop's web store. Then we've got another one from Dark Imperium, the one with the Power Sword. And finally last but not least we've got the multi-part Primaris Lieutenant, the one that has a few more meaningful war gear options including the one to get a Power Fist, maybe trying to represent most of the war gear options for the rest of them in a single kit, perhaps to try and provide some sort of sanity to people who wanted just any one given loadout. Overall it's certainly got a bit ridiculous over the years, it's not like Games Workshop keep all of these as current miniatures that you can buy, some of them are exclusive minis, but it is just kind of weird that they've sort of embraced the meme at this point and are just going with it. It seems that just about every single Space Marine release seems to come with its own lieutenant along, and that continues to some of the other ones that aren't mentioned here in the Phobos armour. Before we launch into the rules, I'd just like to mention the various ways that you can pick up Warhammer miniatures a little bit cheaper and help support all spec's tactics. If you were looking to pick up any of the currently on sale lieutenants at a discount, then here are places in which you can do so. Element Games in the UK, Gap Games in Australia, Fenris Workshop in Canada, and Wargame Portal in the USA. All those are links down in the video description, give some good discounts on Games Workshop's products, and anything bought through those links does go to help support all spec's tactics. Let's get into the rules properly though, and for all the above mentioned lieutenants, they're now represented by this one standard lieutenant datasheet, 65 points for your standard guy in Tacticus armour, now no differentiation between Primaris or Firstborn. He's a fairly standard issue marine support character, 4 wounds with a 3 plus save, 
I'd say that perhaps the most interesting loadouts that he has are the option for the Neo Volkite pistol, Storm Shield, and Power Sword that are all tied together for the Indomitus loadout. Having the Invulnerable is really quite nice. Otherwise, the loadout I'd be most tempted by would be the Power Fist backed up by some sort of scary pistol or bolt rifle. Maybe a little bit more emphasis on damage than defense there. In any case, as mentioned at the start of the video, he grants lethal hits to his unit. He also allows his units to fall back, shoot, and charge. And he's got a really good choice of Tacticus units that he can join, and that translates over to a lot of Primaris unique things in other Space Marine chapters. He can join things like, say, the Black Templar Sword Brethren or Death Watch Proteus kill teams. Overall, for the standard data sheet, I feel like he's a very usable character for the Space Marines, definitely played competitively a fair bit. The lethal hits is just really meaningful for quite a lot of the units that he can join here. If the, your squad was going to wound the enemy on a 5+, the lethal hits upgrade on a 3+, ballistic skill unit means that on average you get a 50% damage boost against those targets, which is very meaningful indeed. I think it's particularly nice for some of the scarier close combat units. The Bladeguard veterans in particular, with their good AP and damage but kind of low strength. It's great for Hellblasters with their mid-strength plasma, and it is quite nice for certain other combinations as well. It certainly is quite nice that you can use the lethal hits to impact the melee profile of the lieutenant himself, and maybe a captain or special character. You could say have a Bladeguard veteran unit with a lieutenant in it, and say Chief Librarian Tigerius or something, also allowing you to get enhancements into the unit. Otherwise, it can be interesting for the Fire Discipline combo in Gladius, going for all the investment for the sustained and lethal hits on a 5+, plus with some stratagems. That is really quite good on Hellblasters, even if perhaps the single most common way to use it is Aggressors. And fallback Shoot and Charge is definitely great opportunistically. It means that you can just think about waltzing out of combat and engaging something completely different. His own damage is alright with the Power Fist or Sword or Shield. He definitely does chip in. Overall, I'd be tempted to rate him quite highly between all that utility. I've chosen to give him a full 5 stars here. I'd definitely be tempted somewhere along the 4-5 to five sort of mark though. Otherwise, getting into the more specialist lieutenants, first up we have the Reaver lieutenant. Kind of a cool look to him with the half skull mask and quite a dynamic miniature jumping forward with his combat blade with a smoke bomb on the go. In game, the Reaver lieutenant is 55 points and he is just locked to the Reaver squad or Hounds of Morkai if you're Space Wolves. He's got a similar sort of profile to the standard one, but with the Furboss Smoke and Scouts keywords. And when he deals his damage, he gets precision on his attacks like the rest of the Reavers. They are all AP 0 though. He gets a damage 2 pistol at range and then 6 attacks with a strength 4 AP 0 combat knife in melee. Otherwise, he has the standard lethal hits. And then his bonus special rule is Deadly Terror, increasing the range of the Reaver's Terror Troops ability by 3 inches. Overall, compared with the standard lieutenants though, I feel like the Reaver lieutenant is one of the most eclipsed characters in the Space Marine Codex. If you just want lethal hits, then you can do that with the Phobos lieutenant, which just offers a far better special rule in my opinion, as well as far more flexibility. Being locked to Reavers is really quite a disadvantage in most chapters. They're just not considered very strong right now whatsoever. And even within Reavers, given that he doesn't get the deep strike rules, it's even locked to being super niche for them, meaning that you can't use them on a deep striking unit, and then you'd want the Faux Boss instead. Terra Troops going out to 9 inches, I'd rate as okay but not huge. I'd say if anything, it's maybe a little bit more interesting in Hounds of Morkai for Space Wolves, where that would be the best place that I'd rate to run him. But even then, I'm just not sure it's really worth the investment, and the lethal hits does actually have a bit of anti-synergy with their devastating wound weapons. Unfortunately, between all that, I just really wouldn't rate him. A ridiculously niche unit that you can use him in, that's considered extra weak at the moment, and pretty much directly outclassed by the Phobos Lieutenant, in my opinion. Speaking of which, let's move on to that guy. The Phobos Lieutenant is the one that came out originally with the Shadow Spear box set, I believe, and since then he's been present in various combat patrols, now coming in the Space Marine Vanguard force, alongside the Suppressors and the Monopose Eliminators and things. He maybe has a little bit more of an Infiltrator and Cursor sort of feel to him, though he still comes with a Grav Shoot, which is kind of cool, and that is one advantage when leading Reavers. In-game, he's got somewhat similar stat lines to the rest of them, a few trade-offs compared with the Reaver Lieutenant, he loses precision on his attacks, though he does get sustained hits on his combat blades, and an extra shot at range with that mastercrafted bolt carbine. Otherwise, he can deep strike and infiltrate, which is pretty useful for either joining infiltrators or grab shoot reavers. Gives out his standard lethal hits, and then also he has his fun special rule, shoot and fade, which means that after you've shot, you can make a normal move of d6 inches. 
Out of the Phobos and the Reaver, I'd rank this guy as significantly more interesting and dangerous. Lethal hits for Phobos stuff does make them a bit more dangerous, though overall I'd still say he's not really going to make them a threat to anything with a good save or particularly high toughness, given that their attacks tend to come up with AP 0 and damage 1. It definitely doesn't hurt though, but more importantly I'd say that his real big draw is that D6 inch movement that can be done after shooting means that rather than having jump shoot jump for things like eliminators with an instigator bolt carbine, you could have this guy making a unit of infiltrators go around the board really quite quickly, and perhaps one of the most fun uses for it could be to have him drop with a unit of breathers, where he could get a very close range charge off on a unit if he wanted to, which could at least be kind of fun even if their damage output still isn't great. Overall I'd say it's solid enough, though maybe a little bit of a pricey upgrade on units that you might often just want running around by themselves. I've chosen to rank him at a 3.5 stars out of 5. Next up we've got the shiny new Tyranid Hunting Lieutenant with the combi weapon. This guy originally coming from the Leviathan box, seems likely that Games Workshop will probably release him on a sprue alongside the Apothecary and some Stone Guard at some point in the future. He's really quite a fun and character for miniature I think. In game compared with the many many other flavours of lieutenants that all give you lethal hits in one way or another, this guy does operate very differently. He is a 70 point lone operative character, and on his base stats he doesn't really do that much damage, though perhaps makes up for it slightly just by being very annoying to try and kill. He gets a 5 plus feel no pain type save, and the stealth special rule, meaning that he's got a reasonable chance of surviving some shooting that he really shouldn't otherwise. And on top of that he gets a reactive move called evade and survive. If you can move within 9 inches of him he gets to move a normal move, which would mean that he often might be able to backpedal out of targeting range from lone operative, or either hide behind cover or recoil for an oncoming charge. While he might not be doing all that much damage besides against light infantry with some anti-infantry paired combat blades, it's certainly kind of hard to catch up with and take down. Otherwise his big and interesting boost is that he gets to nominate one objective marker, and while enemy models are within range of that objective, each time your models target them, you get to reroll a wound roll of 1. Kinda nice that that's an across the battlefield ability just for him being present, and that could add up to a reasonable enough damage boost if you do have multiple tough enemy units trying to take that point. Overall between all that, these things do seem to stack up well enough in his favour. Quite a lot of competitive lists do tend to run this guy, Cheap lone operatives generally have good value of their own, just being a unit that the enemy can't interact with at long range so they can be alright to sit on certain primary objectives, maybe do some screening, and he's a particularly disruptive one in getting the reactive movement ability that he has, which means that even if the enemy does try to move up to destroy him, often they might not be able to. Otherwise that damage boost he has could genuinely stack up to be well worth it over the course of an entire game depending on the opponents. You just have to make sure that you're marking the objective that genuinely your opponent will be putting their important units on. I think that does make up for the fact that his damage output is kind of weak besides against light infantry. Occasionally I've seen him get paired with Primarchs as well such as Gilliman or the Lion where he can trigger their lone operative rules and stop them getting shot at long range as a result. Overall at 2000 point games I've rated him a full 5 out of 5, it's certainly competitively played fairly often. I feel that for smaller games like a thousand points or so though, he's perhaps not quite a standout. Perhaps his biggest rival for Space Marine Loma operatives might be a Calidus Assassin jumping around the board doing secondary objectives, which also has a ton of value in the objective game. Finally for the more generic picks out of Codex Space Marines, there's the Apothecary Biologist. I know that this guy is emphatically not a lieutenant, he functions more as a battlefield scientist, but given that we don't have a lethal hits lieutenant upgrade in Gravis armor, it seems that he might be fitting that role. I will mention him briefly here, as I feel like otherwise people would have asked me where he was. In game the Apothecary Biologist is 55 points and is a 5 wound toughness 6 character in Gravis armor, has an Absolver Bolt Pistol and just a close combat weapon besides that, and again gives the powerful Gravis units the lethal hits ability, so a solid damage boost there. His other special abilities are to help out on the objective game just a bit, he gets objective control 3 at base, and then if his unit destroys an enemy unit while in melee combat, that goes up to a big objective control 9, really quite a weighty presence on objectives. The Apothecary Biologist is again a model that's played really quite commonly in competitive lists, Lethal hits on some powerful damage dealers is really quite nice, in particular he tends to be paired with aggressors, where he can make the bolt storm and frag storm shots auto wound the enemy, not too bad for lower strength weapons, particularly as they can get a bit of AP from the aggressors core rule. He definitely doesn't hurt with the power fist attacks though, even if they are twin linked. 
Otherwise, both intercessors and eradicators get some pretty good value as well. I'd say perhaps a little bit less so than the aggressors maybe, but they're usable for both. And he's commonly used to trigger a few big competitive combos, such as fire discipline with aggressors in Gladius, where you can have the aggressors gun down even battle tanks, never mind what they do when they charge into combat, or the somewhat popular Kalgar aggressors and infiltrate combo with this guy, to allow an incredibly scary unit to forward deploy in Vanguard. Overall, he's a really solid, cheap buffing character. I've chosen to give him the 4 5 out of 5 rating here. He's definitely been seeing play on a bunch of battlefields since the model came out in Leviathan. Next up, for the Black Templars flavour of lieutenants, there's the Castellan, including this rather funky one with the power axe and the combi weapon that's a throwback to some classic artwork. He gets his own unique data sheet within the Black Templars Index, and essentially gets the same sort of stats as a regular lieutenant does, with the tactical precision for the lethal hits, and then the four back shoot and charge. The only major difference between him and the other lieutenants are the squads that he can join, which are a bit more limited, and also the choice of war gear that he has. He gets the choice between a Mastercrafted power weapon and an Astartes chainsword for his melee attacks, and then the choice between a heavy bolt pistol and a combi weapon at range. Unfortunately, if you're just looking completely, just comparing like for like, it does seem that the Castellan's data sheet is pretty much strictly suboptimal to the standard lieutenant's one. He does have a very cool model, but he just loses out on two fronts. He costs the exact same points and gets some slightly less exciting war gear and less choice of squads to lead. I'd say that neither of them are really all that big a deal and it doesn't really change his role too much. He's still going to hit somewhat hard in close combat and can still lead certain squads if he wanted one in a Sword Brethren or Crusader squad. But for things that he notably lacks, he doesn't get any option for the Power Fist. And if he's taking the Power Weapon, he can't take the sort of Blade Guard style Storm Shield, which does make the regular Lieutenant a fair bit tougher. Weirdly enough, it also seems that the Power Weapon that he can take here gets one fewer attacks compared with the standard Lieutenant. I'm not really sure what the thinking was with that, really. Despite that, I still rate him as very usable. The main thing that he still brings are his buffing abilities, and it's not like he's useless in combat, though he does seem just to be a little bit directly overshadowed by the standard lieutenant as a competitor. Overall, I've chosen to rate him a 3 out of 5 due to that. Kind of depends on whether he wants to just be very harsh because he is suboptimal, or a bit more generous because he's really not that much different to the standard one. Next up for the Dark Angels, we have a still game legal but soon to be removed option in the Deathwing Strike Master, just due to the fact that at time of recording, the Dark Angels Codex has been out in circulation, but currently the game legal version is still the index one, as that's the only one that we have the points for yet. The Deathwing Strike Master was made from a model from the Deathwing box set. Unfortunately, that one's gone away and is now going to be replaced by the Deathwing Knights, so this guy no longer has a model and won't be getting game rules as a result. Until the Dark Angels Index does vanish though, he's 80 points for essentially a Terminator character with lethal hits, getting really quite a full and flexible choice of Deathwing war gear, everything from Lightning Claws, Thunder Hammers, and even a Mace of Absolution and Storm Shield. In general, he's really quite a solid fighty character. I'd likely be most tempted maybe by a Power Fist or perhaps a Mace of Absolution, probably alongside a Storm Shield. As well as the lethal hits that he grants, he also has a rule called Vanquish the Foe, a personal damage buff of plus one to hit and wound for himself only if he targets an enemy unit that's below half strength. A bit on the niche side and hard to coordinate, but every so often it could be important. Lethal Hits is a fairly nice upgrade for a Terminator squad. Does seem like it could be a solid addition to a 10-man Deathwing unit, whether it's Knights or the regular Terminator variant, though you would have to weigh up against the other good Terminators that you can put in there. The Ancient Captain, Chaplain and Librarian all do have draws of their own. I guess it could be theoretically kind of interesting to do the Fire Discipline Gladius sort of combo on a Terminator unit as well, with a whole bunch of Storm Bolters and Cyclone Missile Launchers if you wanted. It seemed that previously people did occasionally run him, but maybe not more than the other Terminator characters out there. I'd probably rate him somewhere around a 3.5 to 4 star sort of rating. As mentioned, he's recently fallen from support in the Codex, so he won't have his datasheet active for that much longer. Finally, we come to the Space Wolves, where we've first got a battle leader in Terminator armor. Kind of a similar sort of data sheet to the Deathwing Stripe Master, really. A unit that's built from the Wolfguard Terminator box set, a mini character that you can make from that squad. Stats wise, he's kind of similar to the Stripe Master. He's a little bit cheaper at 75 points, and otherwise gets a very flexible choice of war gear. Kind of similar, but gaining the option to have a combi weapon and not having the Mace of Absolution, which is Dark Angel's unique. He grants a Terminator unit lethal hits, 
And to raise his bonus special rule as kind of niche, he gives a 4 plus feel no pain to other character models within the same unit. Not completely irrelevant as you might get precision attacks to try and take them down, but a lot of the time that isn't really going to be a big deal. Overall I'd kind of rate him similar to the Strike Master really. Lethal hits on Terminators is a good boost. He does come at a cheaper cost at 75 points, though I would say that his buffing rule is perhaps even more niche than the Strike Master's one. Both him and the Deathwing Strike Master seem somewhat pinned to how strong Terminators are overall in game. I'd say they're not awful for the Space Marines, though don't tend to make their way into most competitive lists. If they were a little bit cheaper, then I'm sure we'd see the Terminator support characters a little bit more frequently as well. Overall, I've chosen to rate this guy 3.5 stars out of 5. Maybe could have been persuaded to put it up to a 4. Finally, for our look at the Space Marine Lieutenants though, next up we have a battle leader on the Thunderwolf. The other unique Space Wolf one, and again this is made out of the Thunder Wolf kit, a character choice that you can have leading the squad of Femrisian cavalry into battle. The Thunder Wolf battle leader gets some pretty impressive stats, 5 wounds at toughness 6, usually with a 4 plus invulnerable save from a storm shield, strikes in melee similar to most of the other combat lieutenants out there, a power fist and relic weapons are options. And on top of that, you also get the crushing teeth and claws of the Thunderwolf with three extra attacks at strength 5 AP 1. And potentially all of these attacks can be significantly more damaging, as if he's attached to a Thunderwolf cavalry unit on the charge, you get plus 1 damage to these, making him kind of monstrous for the 80 points. Then on top of that, lethal hits is pretty much exactly the rule that you do want on Thunderwolf cavalry. They've got quite a flurry of lower strength and lower AP attacks, so getting 2 damage on those is pretty excellent. And it definitely helps out with his own profile, just giving the unit a fair bit more punch against heavy hitters. Finally, he gets a fun reactive move of d6 inches to being shot. This means that if the opponent's trying to do gunline things and trying to shoot down your oncoming Thunderwolves, they can't afford to have their units too close to the enemy, as if they do, the Thunderwolves might just waltz into combat with them and potentially stop any other shooting from targeting the unit. That could be very, very scary and very disruptive. Overall, between all that, I'd say he's a very, very strong character for Space Wolves, often played in the popular Thunderwolf Stormlance sort of formations that they like at the moment. I'd say that for the points cost, he might be the single best Thunderwolf cavalry leader. The lethal hits, the reactive move, the Storm Shield on a lieutenant sort of profile, all of that is rather excellent. I think it's just a very, very efficient data sheet all round. I've given him the full 5 out of 5 rating here. So anyway, I guess with the Divergent chapters talked about, that brings us to the end of our look through the various flavours of Space Marine Lieutenant out there. Kind of interesting that there's quite so many models for them that actually don't have as many data sheets as you might have expected for that. Overall, they do tend to be quite strong as a unit class, I think. Lethal Hits is a genuinely good damage boost for plenty of units out there. I'd say the standard one, the Apothecary Biologist, the Thunderwolf Battle Leader, and the Commie Weapon Lieutenant might be the very pick of the strongest Space Marine second in commands out there. Let me know your thoughts on any of these guys though, look forward to hearing your ideas down in the comments, and if you'd like to see more like this then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new ones out just about every day, I'm sure we'll have more for the Space Marines. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description, alongside those links to the discount retailers that I mentioned earlier, both good ways to support the channel depending on what you'd like. I do try and give some advantages for Patreon backers to supporting the videos though. Seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.